but in Ambassador Akbaruddin. You are someone who has worked very closely with Prime Minister Narendra Modi in different capacities over the last one decade. And you've seen the significant shifts that have happened in this foreign policy. India was power push, India being known, recognized, and consulted uh, at the global forums. And particularly, you also dealt with China and Pakistan very closely, especially at the United Nations. Do you see India as this peace catalyst? Do you believe uh, in this statement, axiom of the Prime Minister, not an era of war? Because the reality seems to be very different, although India has taken a very independent stance. But India's foreign policy, the dynamic change that has really happened, how do you really define this from the SCO to the G20? And also, finally, India coming to the rescue of all stranded Indians, something that hasn't really been talked about as much, from Ukraine, where 22,000 people were stranded, even those Americans and Chinese and others were stranded, but nobody really came to their rescue. At the same time, recently in Qatar, the eight Navy veterans who were rescued, the unthinkable rescue and release that really happened. How do you define this change in the foreign policy, the dynamic energy that Prime Minister really brings in? So thank you, Aditya, for giving me an opportunity to engage with you. Um, let me start by saying that uh, the pursuit of foreign policy is amongst the most difficult pursuits of any public policy. Um, because we work in an architecture where there is no sovereign, unlike domestic politics where there is sovereign authority. So it's a very competitive field. It's a field where sometimes competition leads to conflict. Um, doing well in that requires, if I may say, three or four big um, things to be ticked off. One, you require domestic stability. No country can take on a greater role if it doesn't have domestic stability. Look at India for the last 10 years. We have, uh, because domestic stability is the basis for socioeconomic growth. We have good social economic growth. So we've ticked that under Prime Minister Modi. What's the next thing that you would want to, um, uh, for a good activist foreign policy? Number two, I would say, is a leadership which is willing to take risks. And let's not forget, when Prime Minister Modi became the Prime Minister 10 years ago, he had no experience of foreign policy, yet his first big move was something that foreign policy analysts never thought of, including me, I was then in the foreign ministry, he decided to call all South Asian leaders to his inaugural. This was anathema. Yet, it reflected a willingness to take risk. So, in the Prime Minister, we have a leader who's willing to take risk, and over the last 10 years, he's now established himself as a global figure. So, you've ticked off another box. What's the third thing that you would require? You'd require a good tool or instrument of foreign policy in the diplomatic service. And India has always had a diplomatic service, which has uh, been um, well known for its diplomatic prowess. It's now increased in size. It's now becoming more globalist in its nature internally, in the sense we are taking in people from others. So you've ticked three boxes. What is left? The fourth box is you need opportunities. And as was said, that this is a period of tumult. This is a period where there are challenges, but amongst challenges have been numerous opportunities. You've listed some of them. So what happens if you have a uh, period of tumult with opportunities? All you need is a willingness to be more active. And a growing India has shown that. When Prime Minister Modi says that this is not an era of war, he doesn't mean that there will not be wars, because wars are endemic, conflict is endemic to the international system. What he means is that there are no solutions that can be brought about by wars. So if there are no solutions that are going to be brought about by wars, you need other solutions, and that perhaps diplomacy, peacemaking, etc., are the way. So I would think, going forward, if India ticks all the three, four boxes above and the world is going to be tumultuous, get ready for a more activist foreign policy where India starts shouldering 
greater public goods. It's not only in terms of our digital infrastructure, but also in terms of peace and security. So I would think down the, year, down the line, towards the end of this year, you will find a more activist India, more keen to be uh, willing to take on global responsibilities of a kind it has not taken in the past.